So when we look at demographics, what we're really looking at are the factors that influence population density and dispersion patterns. So ignoring the words demographics, let's just think about things that will influence population density and dispersal patterns. So density, hmm, might be things like competition, food, resources, space. Dispersion patterns might be like, um, is it for mating? Is it random how they land? Is it for hunting? So when we look at the things that influence population density and dispersion patterns, you have ecological needs of a species. So their food requirements, their space requirements, sunlight, water, nutrients, etc. You have the structure of the environment. So that could include even the trophic levels. It could include the land. Is it rocky? Is it sandy? Um, what type of soil quality is there? And it could also include intra-specific interactions. So this is competition within the same species. So squirrels competing with squirrels, or squirrels mating with squirrels, or squirrels raising squirrels. Because you see here the word is interactions. So how do the members of the same population interact with each other? These things, these factors, the needs of a species, the environment, and the interactions between the population are all going to influence that population and its characteristics. Now the study of these things and how it all influences populations is called demographics. So demographics are the factors that influence population density and dispersion patterns and also how they also influence other characteristics of a population. So we have something called demography. And in demography, this is the study of the vital statistics of populations. So this is like grouping them and measuring them and looking at how they change over time. So scientists use something called life tables for that. So let's go ahead and look at what a life table is. A life table are age-specific summaries of the survival patterns of a population. So if you were to look at like sea turtles, for example, Sea turtles lay thousands and thousands of eggs, but only very, very, very few actually grow up and survive long enough to become adults. So you would have, if you were looking at age-specific summaries, wow, there's so many little tiny babies, but after a year or two, there's rapid death. Like So the death rate, the per capita death rate would be high. Um, or if you look at like humans, we have lots of babies being born, but, and a lot of them actually live until adulthood. So we could look at like a human population and look at how many zero to five year olds are there in a population, five to 10 year olds, and see about the survival of that species. So scientists use something called life tables. So here, what we're gonna look at, this down here at the bottom is the percentage of the population. And we, we usually divide it into males and females because they actually have different survival patterns. So here we have a section of the population measuring zero to four year olds. Um, and so what really that means is when I look at this, I could see if I were to ask you, hey, what's a percent of zero to four year olds that are female? Well, I would look right here. Oh, about 6% of the population are little girls under four, four years old or less. Same thing with boys. Oh, maybe right under 6% of the population. So then if I look at five to nine year olds, I could see, oh, wow. You can see right here this little gap. That means that this little section here did not survive to the next age cohort. And as you go up, you can see the bars might like decrease in their width. And so this is a survival patterns of a population. And you can kind of see that, oh, the male population kind of decreases a little bit more rapidly than the first. And this kind of goes with the first, with the females. And this kind of goes hand in hand that men tend to be take a little bit more risky behaviors, especially 20 to 24 year olds. Um, and so you can, and also women do live longer and you can see this in life tables. So why these life tables are helpful is because, oh, here's a question for you. What percentage of the population are females 20 to 24 years old? Well, you would take the female side, follow it down, and you can see right here, this is the bar I would be looking at because it says here 20 to 24 year olds, uh, and it's a little over 4% of the population. If I were to ask you, 
Uh, what percentage of the population is between zero and four years old? Well, that one, it doesn't say male or female, so I'm gonna add this six plus this six, so about 12% of the population are under four years old or under. Now, another cool thing about the um, life tables is you can make inferences about them. So here we have what's called our pre-reproductive years. These are members of the population not having babies. Then you have the reproductive years, and you could look to see how much of the population is able to have children. And that could be important for planning for resources, uh, looking at are they gonna reach carrying capacity, what is their overall growth. And then you have your post-reproductive years. Now the post-reproductive years are important, bit like if you're talking about humans, for governments. What is your aging population gonna look like? What plan do you have? And this is where like Social Security comes into play and a retired, uh, having a large or small section of your, oops, large or small section of your population being retired. How are you going to support them? So when we look at this, you can see here are three different examples of countries with different rates of growth. So if we look at Kenya, you see a large amount of the population are, are young in the pre-reproductive years. If you look at the post-reproductive years, you can see it's very narrow. Now what that tells us is that two things. Kenya is experiencing rapid growth. If all of those children were to survive, they'd have a very large population really quickly. But having that narrow top kind of gives us some information that the life expectancy is on the short side. Um, so that could mean that the quality of life is kind of poor, maybe poor nutrition, disease, lack of medical care, and therefore you have a shorter lifespan. If you look at the United States, you can see that our base is just a little bit wider than the top, and that means it's like a slow growth. Whereas in Italy and most of Europe, they have like a zero population growth. When the base of the life table is the same or just as narrow as the top, it means that the number of births is pretty much equaling the number of deaths, and you wouldn't really have too much growth going on there. Now one cool thing you may notice in this, oh, so there's Kenya with a large base, uh, something else of note are these large sections of population right here. Now, what this is, is after World War II, these are the bo uh, baby boomers. So these are children born following World War II, where it shows a, like a, an increase in our population size. And so now, as this generation begins to age, how are we going to support a really large uh, aging population and so right now in, in debates political debates and stuff this is why Social Security is a big issue um, my mom is born in 1962 and she's 53 but if you're born in 1945 um, the beginning of the baby boom age pretty soon you're gonna start to retire and so that's where uh, this comes into play